Hey, everybody. Adam here from the Poisoner's Almanac. I just want to thank you guys so much for, first of all, listening to the podcast and also all of those five-star reviews that you guys are leaving on the various platforms. That means a lot to us. It functions like a tip jar and it pushes the podcast further into all these algorithms to get it to listeners just like you that enjoy it. And also want to encourage you guys to follow the podcast Instagram poisoners underscore almanac. We'll have a link in the show notes. That account is run directly by Becca and she posts an even deeper level of detail uh, on the whatever subjects we covered in the latest episode. And yeah, thanks for listening. Let's get to the episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Poisoner's Almanac. I'm Adam. I'm Rebecca. And what are we covering today, my dear, this morning, this glorious morning? Well, I'm co- well right now I am ingesting caffeine. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if I ingest too much of it, it will turn into a poison. <laughs> but I need it because it's Impossible. morning. Mm. Actually, did you, I think if you drink 100 cups of coffee within an hour, you can die. <laughs> I read that somewhere. Although you probably shouldn't drink even close to that. Do not attempt this. Like ever. But. Right. I wonder how many um, Panera lemonades that is. <laughs> not the lemonade. Okay. Even the lemonades killing everyone. Oh my God. <laughs> not the lemonade. Um, yeah, we are going to talk about uh, some um, like natural remedies and some medications that have been used as poisons. And we've done some of this in the past. We've talked about um, opioids, which are, uh, have, which are used as medications and uh, how the misuse of those or overdosing on those can obviously be poisonous. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I was on uh, quote unquote vacation with our daughter yes. and my mother <laughs> a couple weeks ago, and they had me going everywhere every single day. So Every single day, because what's better on vacation than going somewhere else? Oh my gosh! But so <laughs> yeah, so I was basically parenting somewhere else. Yes. But I, but I am just as surprised. I'm going to be just as surprised as you are to read what I wrote in my notes because, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been a couple of weeks, and kids start back to school next week. So we've had a crazy week of open house, and somebody decided to set up a pool party for the kids tomorrow, and. Um, you know, appointments and all kinds of fun uh, stuff. So. Yes. Anyway. I want to go back to bed. Same. <laughs> anyway, so having been, okay. Oh, God. We're good. That was so scary. Scary. <laughs> Becca just tipped the corner of her computer with her glass full of iced coffee this, right oh, next to look. my laptop and our audio interface. Everything's fine. I may have soiled my pants. <laughs> You obviously never lived as a clumsy person. No. Um, yes, having been a nurse and studied some pharmacology, I am quite aware that there are many medications that have intentionally been used as poisons. Uh, so I myself have seen those affected by poisonous substances that are not medications, as well as those who are over-medicated and in the process are being indirectly and unintentionally poisoned. Mm. Um, I've actually got, I've got some interesting stories from when I worked in the hospital that I suspect were intentional poisonings, but I oh can't boy. talk about that. So because of laws, <laughs> um, anyway, your honor, yeah, we said on the podcast. So one huge tip for me, um, and you know, obviously I have to say this as well, but also it is a tip for me is to always inform your doctors about whatever medications you may be taking prescribed or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And I know in this day and age, you're like doctors who can afford a doctor. (laughs) And I get that. I totally do. It's I'd like to bear. I'd like to buy one healthcare, please. Yeah. Health healthcare is rough right now, especially it's been rough for a while when it comes to. It's never been good. Let's be honest. I, for one, think 
I believe in I believe in free healthcare. I think healthcare should be free personally. And I know, I know, um, not everybody thinks that here in the U S but I do. Mm -hmm. And I also think that if the doctors, like, if you do have to pay for it and doctors get it wrong, you should get a refund. (laughs) Like (laughs) you do it with everything else. Oh man. Like we're supposed to be trained in differential diagnosis. You shouldn't get a rotator cuff repair when you actually have cervical radiculopathy. Just my soapbox. I'm just well, saying. And they're they're banking on you not knowing what any of that is anyway. Oh, of course. So of course. Anyway. <laughs> yes. However, you know, and I <laughs> a lot of people look at I feel like nurses are both the most trusted profession, but also not very trusted, especially since the whole there's there's a group of people who are very much anti yes. science. And me, yes. I'm like, you know what, believe what you want to believe. Mm-hmm. I'm just here to help where I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally am a big fan of science mm-hmm. and the facts, but we'll we will for our part we will rely on the clinical data. Yeah. So, yeah, but if you know, don't just take medications with other medications without letting somebody know, mm-hmm. because medications interact with each other, and uh, that's including vitamins. I mean, even certain things you drink. Uh, Grapefruit juice can mess with blood pressure medications. I mean, it's that's wild. It's okay. a it's a whole thing. So um, you have to be careful about what you take. Mm-hmm. Um, while that may seem like common sense, people often do not think about the many supplements they consume as medications. Our dog just came in the studio. Right? Yes, I heard the door open and I knew my daughter let her out. <laughs> she was like, "Get out of my room." We are petting her right now. She needs love. She needs all the love. <laughs> Can't overdose on love. Yes. Anyway. I mean, unless you're like Romeo and Juliet, which I guess. I mean, anyway. Sadie, did you set that joke up? Good job. Puppy dog. She's a sweetheart. Uh, So, yeah. Yeah, Supplements count as medications. Okay. Also, alcohol. Okay. Oh, boy. Alcohol does interact with lots of meds or whatever. So. And tobacco products. Drugs of any sort. Okay. Caffeine. I hate to say that. I love caffeine. I'm a big fan of caffeine. Um, These interact with many medications. It can lead to toxic effects within the body. So, yeah. Medical professional. Medical. Medical. Medical professionals are not there to judge you. And if they do, you should report them and find someone better, mind Mm. you. Because I know not everybody is a good. There's no. There's not. Not all doctors are perfect or good. So. Definitely find a different one. They are supposed to be there to help. I know there are some out there who are horrible for various reasons, uh, usually more out of negligence or personality or spite. And I will definitely be talking about a group of those later. But you can often recognize the good ones by their desire to work with you and not just for you. Because, you know, some some are really are just there for the money and they hate their lives and their jobs and <laughs> Look, I've met these doctors, okay? These doctors, yeah. I used to work night shifts. I've called these doctors in the middle of the night. You know what? And they can can shove it because they picked this field, okay? Listen, you're accessing a memory. I am. I, look. (laughs) This is not theory. I've worked with some terrible doctors. I've worked with some amazing doctors, too. But I've I've worked with some pretty awful ones as well. Doctors are people, too. Just me. Mm-hmm. Okay, and nurses. There's been some mean nurses too, but you'll find. I mean, there well, are. There's good more ones. mean nurses. Let's be honest. Well, they're mean because they've had to put up with all the doctors' bull crap. Not do- not just doctors. I feel like I'm crapping That's on right. doctors. I've known some wonderful, wonderful doctors. Okay, oh, for sure. If you want to put the blame on the problems with healthcare on somebody, take it to those rich CEOs Ooh, and all the stuff protecting all the hospitals getting all the money. Everybody runs United Healthcare <laughs> and private equity. All the insurance companies, all that crap. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's yeah. not hard to tell who's going straight to hell. <laughs> and it rhymed. Hey. <laughs> it's hard to do that in the morning. Anyway, yeah, I uh yeah, so I don't I don't hate doctors. I just I have worked with some terrible ones though, and I've worked with some good ones. So you got to you, you it takes I feel like that should be a relationship. The doctor patient thing should be a relationship and it should be one of mutual respect. And if the doctor doesn't respect you and he's not listening to you, you should get a different one. That's just my opinion. And um, 
honestly, I think it should give you a freaking refund because doctor's appointments are freaking ridiculously <laughs> expensive. I just went to one doctor who could have told I me knew you were going to bring this up. <laughs> I went to one doctor recently. He was a specialist, of course, and he literally just told me uh, over. I think you're okay. The phone. Yeah, he could have told me this over the phone, and I just got charged two hundred and fifty dollars because right. of just visiting and him telling me what With I could have heard insurance. somewhere else. With health insurance. Mm-hmm. With health insurance. Two hundred and fifty bucks out of pocket. Yeah. So. Love it. Fun. Love it. <laughs> anyway. Now, having having said all of this, I'm not bitter at all. I find the history of medicine to be both funny and horrific. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a bit of dark humor. So, I mean, like the chainsaw was literally invented to help women give birth. I don't know if you knew that or not. I'm not over it yet. Like, I'm just letting you know. They, they made okay. like. Okay. She's the list. You listeners can't <laughs> see what Rebecca's doing with her this hands. They made it. I know. They made it a manual, like a. Yeah, I mean, yes, she's making a hand cranking motion. Yeah. Like they would have done with the original chainsaw. And now I won't sleep. <laughs> Look, childbirth has, I mean, it's, it's come a long way. It's come a long way. It's still awful, in my opinion. Well, yeah. Never want to do it again. Change, yeah. Never want to do it again. Um, Noted. But as, <laughs> that was rough. I'm sorry, but no. Um, but hey, uh, not to scare anybody out there who wants kids, definitely go for it. Just, uh, yeah. She's making the chainsaw motion again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's not. It feels like she is. Um, I think it is time that we look at some past remedies as well that can be quite toxic. Okay. Um, some that are even being revived and promoted on certain social media apps. And Ayo. I feel like we should talk about them because of that. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this first one that I'm going to talk about. I'm like excited. I'm like, what am I talking about? Um, and we could be talking a lot about the toxic effects about like bacteria brought mm-hmm. about by, by bleh, brought about by bacteria. The B sound is very hard for me this morning, mm. such as those found in um, such fads as raw milk, raw flour. You know, the reason oh, you're dear. one of the reasons you're not supposed to eat like raw cookie dough or raw dough in general is the raw flour. It's more than it's, I mean, you know, you shouldn't eat thing with raw eggs either. But like the raw flour has um, mm-hmm. quite a bit of can have quite a bit of bacteria in it. Mm-hmm. It can cause a lot of problems, like lasting, lasting problems. Also, don't eat raw oysters. Don't yeah, do well, that. <laughs> they say in certain months it's okay. I don't know specifically, but I know when it's like... I am opting all the way out. Yeah. I don't care what time of year it is, cook that. If you eat raw oysters, you have the chance of getting Vibrio. It is a flesh-eating bacteria, I believe, it's and it's, uh, it's not fun. A famous YouTuber... And his girlfriend recently were hospitalized for several weeks. His girlfriend died. He survived. No, I've had just raw oysters. Recently. I've had raw oysters before, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. So you're, it's a risk that you take. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So and maybe we'll do some episodes on the history of germs and their toxic effects. Oh boy! I mean, because I think, uh, yeah, we could talk about the use of biological type warfare or biological weapons in that in that way because people have used um things like that yep to their advantage now today i want to start with and y'all don't come for me okay i'm not saying this is all bad so hey, just be patient with me i want to start with sambucus nigra elderberry ah okay elderberry don't hate me don't come for me I know some people swear by this as an ingredient, and it's not. I'm not here to bash it. Okay. Also, do come at Becca really hard because it'll drive up the engagement and make our podcast more successful. <laughs> oh my god! Look, I am Let's not. Be honest. I'm not here to bash elderberry. I'm not okay. But to simply this be also categorize as elder abuse. Shut up. <laughs> um, but just so you know, uh, elderberry is a dark purple berry of the European or black elder tree that grows in Europe, North America, Asia, and North Africa. It blooms in spring with large clusters of small white or cream colored flowers, which then become the berries it is known for. Mm-hmm. Um, the name comes from the ancient Greek sambuke, which is which was an ancient wind instrument because you can make the twigs into whistles. You can... You know, what's oh. whistling anyway? You know, <laughs> uh, there 
There's a lot of superstition surrounding the tree and its flowers and fruit. And y'all know how much I love a good folklore plant. Mm -hmm. Now, just to soothe those who are like, oh, what does she mean, elderberry on a, po on a poison podcast? Elderberries are poison when they are not processed or cooked correctly. Okay. Ah. So if you're eating them raw out in the wild, probably not the best idea. But if you know how to process them or you're buying them or you're buying products that have it as an ingredient, they're fine. Gotcha. Got it. All okay. Right. So because you'll find like you will find like cold medicines that are like with elderberry, you know, and <laughs> there's not there's not a whole lot of I don't think there's a whole lot of studies um, that say it's I mean, they, they've been there have been some things that say like, oh, it's good for like cold and flu symptoms. But that's about it. Okay. It doesn't, it's not like a cure all or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it might help with some symptoms. Still, some people swear by it, and I'm not trying to anger anybody. I'm just telling you, make sure it is prepared correctly. So, in some traditions of folklore, the tree, the elder tree, is said to ward off witches. But in other traditions, witches congregate under them. Okay. Not a witch, I'm the wife. Those are two opposing. Yeah. So it depends on like yeah, it depends on where you're where you're hearing okay. the tradition or where you're at. The elderberry community is going to be torn over this. <laughs> According to the poetic, is it Ida, Edda, poetic Edda? Ida. Ida. Don't you know. don't know. <laughs> Why am I listening to you? Ida. I, is it Ida? No poetic idea. Ida? I've heard, I've, I've learned about this a long time ago and I cannot remember which one it is. A collection, it's a collection of Norse poems and myths. If an elder tree is cut down without chanting to the elder mother, who is like a dryad of sorts, she will be released to take her revenge. Not revenge. Grr. <laughs> El Grr berry. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, it's pretty like sacred tree. That was stupid. Oh my gosh. The, they also believe in, oh Lord, Svalterfar. Okay, look, these, <laughs> look, I can screw this up. These are my ancestors. <laughs> um, uh, black elves who favored the trees for their rituals in the British Isles it has been believed that falling asleep under an elder tree would curse you to never wake up again hmm. you know I could use some sleep <laughs> like right. that I'm just kidding you're like I kind of want to try it <laughs> The elder mother, by the way, is known as Lady Elhorn in England and Hildemur or Hildiend in Germany mm. and in Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, it is considered bad luck to cut or touch the wood among Rom Romani traditions, as well as to burn the wood. Like if you burn the wood, it's, it's also very, like it has a distinct smell and people kind of um, associate it with witchcraft and things like that. Its smoke is said to reveal witches. Okay. A child baptized and anointed with the bark's juice was said to allow the child to speak with witches. I mean, that right there, that's that's a good, that would be a great idea for a novel. I'm just saying. 100%. For those of you who are into that. A parcel tongue? <laughs> also, well, speaking of that, um, the Elder Wand from the Deathly Hollows in Harry Potter. Yes. It was made from the branch of an elder tree. <gasps> Okay. In fact, I'm immediately invested. <laughs> the Irish believed that an elder tree was a sign of a cursed sight and that it had a bad temper or was full of mischief. Hmm. There is a story there that tells that if a person is killed with a weapon made of elder wood, the person's hand would be seen rising from their grave. So, I, don't, I mean, it's not really that scary to me, but. I'd be like, oh, cool. Check it out. You're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So funny. The girl who loves Halloween is not spooked by this. No. The Scottish plant. Oh, my God. The Scottish once planted it on graves to prevent the dead from rising. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. The lore is top right. shelf. I can see people fighting in bars over this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see the elder one come out. Yeah. <laughs> It was also included in the instructions for creating a core This is a clay corpse, which was basically a European voodoo doll. Okay. Okay. 
Now my next line. There's too much. Okay. <laughs> I will sum up. Obviously, voodoo, voodoo wasn't practiced there, but this particular bit of superstition was. In a way, so it's not, it's not voodoo in the terms of like actual voodoo or hoodoo kind of stuff. They didn't call it that. It wasn't those beliefs. What is hoodoo? <sighs> okay. Who do that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that term. Voodoo. There's voodoo and there's hoodoo. And I only know a little bit about it. There's, it's a different thing. Yeah. Okay. If y'all want, if y'all want a total episode on voodoo and hoodoo, we should do it. Oh but, man, I, um, we could find someone who could, like does it, and like we could like interview them. That would be cool. that would be that would Gnarly. be entertaining. Anyway, um, I am. It is nine thirty in the morning, and I should be more awake than I am. But this is me in the morning. I'm sorry. Um, These are your default settings. I, I didn't expect any more than this. Just so I think, and y'all feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I am not saying that this is correct, okay? This is just what I remember hearing, but I could totally be wrong. Okay. I think voodoo is the like religion, the actual religion part. And then like hoodoo is more the malevolent stuff taken out of it. Like they. The dark voodoo. They, yeah. Get out of here. I think so. I Okay. I didn't even know, dude. I, I recently watched something on it, and honestly, I'm not saying that that is... Now I understand here. why that subreddit has been so hostile to me. I literally have the <laughs> internet at my fingertips. You do. As many of us do. So if that's wrong, I can see. Voodoo is an actual religion. Hoodoo is not. Vo oh. Yeah. And I think hoodoo is where people do, like, the the bad stuff. The, the not so nice stuff, I think. Anyway, they do. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you've got problems. I can't do this this morning. Anyway, so a core creek. No, you do. Jesus, <laughs> it's Friday, bro. Was it? Uh, is it Friday? It is. It is Friday. Oh, <laughs> the day of the week. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Clock that yet, man. I need to go sleep under an you, elder tree. You got a lot on your mind. Y'all, we did I'm the so elementary school open house last night. And, you know, Becca, yeah, a lot, on, lot going through your brain. I'm tired. I'm so continue. tired. There were so many people. Yes. So, um, according to records dating back to 1566 in England, one of these clay corpses was created using dirt from a fresh grave, a rib bone from a dead person. A black spider, I guess any black spider. Herman? Not Herman. <laughs> and the inner pith of an elder tree. Well, that pisses me right off. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well, it's not just any inner pith. It's uh, that of an elder tree tempered in warm water where toads have been washed. Oh, I would think so. <laughs> hmm. So that's fun. Is it pith? Is it pith or pithy? The E is silent, correct? Oh, I actually don't know. I think it's pith. I'm thinking of the P-I-T-H, like a pithy quote or saying. It's the inside of the freaking okay. twig, basically. It's removed. Okay. Okay. So that's fun. I'm tired, y'all. Interesting. Anyway, according to tradition... Tr According to tradition, just talk like that. The rest I, of the uh, <laughs> you'll be fine. Pins were placed in the doll with incantations toward the intended victim. So it's kind of like you know, hoodoo. Uh, <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm sorry, it's just funny. Hoodoo. So, you? Somebody, somebody's gonna make a doll of you if you don't stop it. Okay. You're like, I mean, it's like that. What is that? Um, that TikTok thing where they're Whatever like, "Whatever helps me feel something." Somebody tells them to go to hell, and they're like, "I'm already there." <laughs> okay. I feel like someone has made a, a voodoo doll of America, and it's just every sticking month or the two, crap out of it. They're just shoving a pin, <laughs> yes, right through the hearts of just the millennials. <laughs> Things have been getting weird. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it would often be put into a running stream since it was made of clay it would slowly erode or waste away in the stream just like the maker wanted to intend the intended victim to do so that's dark rare <laughs> moving on the fact that the unripe 
and uncooked berries are poisonous is actually uh, blamed on a curse placed by Danes who had died in battle. I am going to mess this up. It is known as Lysan Gwaid Gwir, or Plant of the Blood of Man. I think this is, yeah. Oh, Eelson? Mm-hmm. Is it Eelson Gwaid Gwir? Gwaid Gwir. How do you know that? I don't know. I, uh, that is almost like a well. It almost like, I like, like a Welsh. I feel like phrase. You were a theater kid, and I feel like all theater kids have this. Like, I know how well, to say that. I think I, honestly, I think I've always had some instinct for like oral learning. Like, I can pick up uh, accents pretty mm. well. I can imitate people's voices. See, if you give me verbal instructions, I, mm, right, it's over. Anyways, anyway, we just said anyway at the same time. <laughs> In Germany, holes in the elder tree are said to be doorways for ancient wood sprites, known as the Waldgeister. Waldgeisters. Waldgeisters. <laughs> forest ghosts. Literally means forest ghosts. Who protect the trees? Some stories have them leading lost travelers back to the road and away from the trees, while others have them getting revenge for the elder queen. There's the elder queen again. So. Okay. In ancient Prussia, with a P, mm-hmm. the elder tree was known to house Pusitus, god of the earth. In this same tradition are his helpers, the Barstukai, sprites related to the Caucus, who we briefly talked about when we discussed the corn cockle. <laughs> Do you remember him? Caucus? He was like a... He would blight the crops, including corn. I vaguely remember that. I just corn. love how you landed on the word Because <laughs> I, I know you. <laughs> these <laughs> these would help with the harvests of men who offered bread and bear meat at the base of the elder trees. Uh, I think it was like annually. And they were held with high respect. Not the caucus. Mm-hmm. These people, these, things, these sprites that were related to the caucus, the barstukai. Mm-hmm. In Lithuania, the elder tree belongs to the god of the dead, Velnius, or Velas. They also believe that the spirits of the dead live on in the trees for a time. Not in the trees, but like in the forests. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that the sound of the wind on the leaves is that of the dead sending messages to loved ones among the living. So Interesting. Yeah. Okay. It is forbidden, therefore, to cut trees down in these forests, and houses are not built where the stumps of cut trees are found, as it is considered unlucky. So that's pretty cool. Pretty gnarly. Mm -hmm. Now on to some facts about its current use as an ingredient or as a remedy. There are some limited studies out there that show elderberry may help cold and flu symptoms, as I've mentioned. Little research has been done, to be honest, um, and other uses have not been substantiated by any facts, including including whether it may or may not help with COVID symptoms. Uh, I know that was a big deal for a bit, but Mm. there really just hasn't been a whole lot of study. Sure. You know, on it. The FDA and Federal Trade Commission have actually had to take action against companies spreading misinformation about elderberry products, relieving or curing COVID in the past. So, I mean, but that was like, it, that was not the only ingredient that I'm sure they've had to deal with because <laughs> it was, there was a lot going around. Oh boy. The one concern I do want to mention about elderberry, okay, and I said this earlier so that nobody would, you know, take me down, is that the berries are toxic if they are not handled correctly. They contain sanbunigrin, which is a cyanogenic glycoside. And by correctly, handled correctly, I mean they need to be cooked or processed, like I said earlier, so that the toxin is removed. Mm -hmm. Didn't we have cardiac glycosides with previous poison? It's been in several different poisons. Now, uncooked portions of the leaves and stems are also toxic, and symptoms of illness from the ingestion of raw elderberry includes nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Not fun. Ingestion of large enough quantities can lead to severe illness. So I'm not telling you not to take your elderberry supplements, but don't just go around picking some elderberries and eating them, thinking they're harmless. Certainly not. So, Also, know who you're buying from. Okay. Um, so quick story 
In August of 1983, 25 people in California became ill after ingesting juice from uncooked pressed elderberries along with the plant's leaves and stems. For some reason, they just like put the whole thing in there and were like, yeah, let's get some juices out of this. Ugh. Eight of these people were flown to a nearby hospital with GI and neurological problems, um, such as dizziness, drowsiness, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, but that being said, that was just all I wanted to say about elderberries okay okay and we're going to move on to a different one but i um i just wanted to touch on that one mainly for the really cool folklore behind it Mm because i just i find a plant with that much folklore super interesting but also yes it can be poisonous if not handled correctly okay got it so take your little elderberry gummies and don't come for me because those aren't poisonous (laughs) but the berries can be right Okay, so the first case I want to discuss involving a medication that was used as a poison that you may not know until, you may not know this story until I mention, or you may not know this drug until I mention what, it was, what it's used for today. Hyacine hydrobromide, okay, okay. Was once, it's, it was once used in small amounts to calm the nerves and for nausea. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It was also used for a time alongside morphine as an anesthetic starting in early 1900 as the combination of the two would put people into sort of a twilight sleep. You called it hyacine hydrobromide. Hyacine. Hyacine. Mm-hmm. Like that's, a, that's another name or that's the full name? That's the full name. That's the full name. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what does hyacine mean? We're getting there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Jeez. Um, Now, this method was also used in childbirth for some time. Did you know that for the longest time, even recent in recent times, I don't know when this stopped, but it wasn't that long ago. They didn't think children or like babies needed anesthesia because they didn't think they could feel. So anytime they did things with children, they just didn't use anesthesia. Oh, dear. Anyway. Okay. A little tangent there. This method was used in childbirth, like I said, and some brands today advertise it for over-the-counter for motion sickness. You see those motion sickness okay. medications? Mm-hmm. Um, it is still sometimes used to help with stomach spasms, post-operative nausea, IBS. Irritable bowel Irritable syndrome. Bowel syndrome. Yes. yes. I am so mm-hmm. tired, you guys. <laughs> I was like... Keep sipping that coffee. In, 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 in... <laughs> In the Beninging. In the Beninging. I know. I was like, I know what this is. Why is my brain not picking it up? And other such ailments. Now, I mentioned that it is used in small amounts because it is toxic when a certain dose is reached. And honestly, that can be said for, well, any drug. But um, I'm talking about drugs that have been intentionally used as poisons. Okay. That's the difference. Okay. Now, it is also known as scopolamine. That sounded really country. Scopolamine. <laughs> Scopolamine. Scorpion mines. And is the main active component produced by plants in the nightshade family, which I know we've talked about. We have. Mm-hmm. Now, scopolamine has an interesting history as it has occasionally been used as a recreational drug, sometimes for religious ritual purposes. Um, but the effects are not exactly fun, so I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It is classified as a deliriant and causes unpleasant hallucinations and illness. Okay. As recently as June of 2008, over 20 people were hospitalized after taking counterfeit rohypnol, which is the date rape drug, I believe. Oh, wow. That wow. actually contains scopolamine. Whoops. Like some people actually take rohypnol just for a, mm-hmm. you know, as a recreational drug. Yeah. Later, in, but the, you know, whoever sold it to them, I guess, didn't tell them that it actually contains scopolamine. Later in January of 2018, nine people in Western Australia were hospitalized after ingesting scopolamine. I'm not sure if it was on purpose or an accident in that case. Actually, no, I went back and looked at it. It was, they had gotten, I think, it from a, from a dealer and, like, didn't know it had scopolamine in it. And it became a whole thing. Yikes. Yeah. It was also used in preparations for rituals of witchcraft or New Age type rituals and by uh, Amer- the Americas 
indigenous groups. And I mean, America's is in North America, Central America, mm-hmm. so maybe some South America as well. For its hallucinogenic Pro- properties? Probably, yeah. 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 Um, okay. By those indigenous groups, such as the Chumash tribe. I could be saying that wrong. Okay. Um, also, scopolamine is reportedly the only active alkaloid in the nightshade family plants that can be absorbed readily through the skin. As such, it is often associated with flying ointment. I think we briefly talked about that when we talked about uh, plants in the nightshade family. It's yeah. a topical preparation that was said to be used by European and North American witches of the past to mm-hmm. induce this flying-like hallucinations. And this is actually where witches flying on broomsticks would later come in from. Because, yeah, oh, I'm not going to go into that too deeply, but so you could look quick, that up. <laughs> the, as soon as we mention like a compound like hydrobromide. And, uh, you know, a similar thing would be like hydrochloric acid or what have you. These, I'm a a little bit of a chemistry nerd. And so the reason these compounds are so potent is because as soon as that hydro, as soon as that hydrobromide hits a solution or, you know, the biological environment of the body where it hits water, that hydrogen ion pops right off. Mm -hmm. And then you get then bromine, which is, is it a noble gas? Am I mistaken about that? Well, this is bromide. Bromide, yeah. Bromine, chlorine, that whole family of gases on the periodic table, they're extremely electron hungry. And you just slap an itty bitty hydrogen ion on one of those and it stabilizes the compound so you can produce it at scale. But when it hits a biological environment or hits solution, it dissociates super fast. And then you like get. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, well played. That's on me. I set the bar too low. <laughs> but the the reason the the you know hydrochloric acid is you know that's a potent thing, mm. hydrobromide, etc. But the reason they're potent is because as soon as that hydrogen ion pops off, then you got this super electron hungry ion of bromine or chlorine that is looking for a reaction. So that's why it does things. So anyways. does all the things. Yes. Now, fun fact about a certain plant in this family of scopolamine producers. Um, and I think we've actually talked about mandrakes before yeah. in, on this podcast. Mm-hmm. But do you remember? Um, I just found this, this point to be interesting. Um, do you remember Rachel from the Old Testament? Because you grew up in. Yes. In a church, churchy background. That's right. Um, the feuding sister stories of Rachel and Leah, which right. I remember reading those and being like, what is wrong with these people? And your middle name is what? Leah. <laughs> I know. I know. But like just reading those stories used to drive just because I'm, I'm like, why are they fighting over this man's affection? He's like totally clueless. This is the ancient Middle East. I know. And like, not marrying meant you would probably die young. And I was like, sometimes <laughs> I would like be like, why are they fighting over him? That's so stupid. And like the other part of me was like, they want to have lots of kids. Oh my God, that would, that would drive me crazy. And then like, you know, and I know obviously this is a different culture, this is a different time, but like also then I would feel sorry for, was it Jacob? Is that his name? Was it Jacob? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd feel bad. I'm like, God, this poor man has to deal with two women constantly. (laughs) The polygamy was really common. It was crazy. Didn't even. But you know, um, well, he got like, he kind of got tricked, right? Into marrying both of them. He did. Uh, Was it Lamech? I think is one who tricked him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, weird times. But uh, <laughs> Rachel traded a night with Jacob for some mandrakes. Do you remember I this? I about that part. Do you remember this? Yes. 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 Mandrakes uh, were considered to be tied to fertility, and she was trying to have more babies because like, they were in this competition of baby making. Apparently. Of course. They were trying to. They, yeah. Now, looking back on it now, they were trying to solidify their position in the social strata right. yeah. of their own family unit. That's what they're yeah. doing. Like it made in that time, it makes perfect sense. Now it's horrific. Right. It just seems like. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like a terrible way to live. I don't know if you know this, you're going to be, you're going to be delighted to know women are people too. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm going to be a people, whether people want me to be or not. There you go. Um, anyway, crazy story. <laughs> I just thought that was an interesting little sidetrack. For mandrakes. mandrakes. <laughs> Now, in the early 20th century, scopolamine was used to try to make a truth serum. So, like a real life Verita serum, Verita serum, Verita serum. Mm-hmm. Veritas. Veritas. <laughs> that was uh, used to make um, 
so they tried to use scopolamine as an interrogation device, but it was stopped after side effects got bad enough. So well, yeah, yeah. Now, criminally speaking, scopolamine has been referred to as devil's breath. Fun, <laughs> and has been used in such places as Colombia as a way to knock out victims so they can be robbed. Now, you know that tracks for Colombia. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the country, not Columbia, South Carolina. Where I'm I mean, sure certain things happen there too. Off in Columbia, South Carolina, yeah. too. Hide your drinks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I've never actually been, you know, to a bar in Columbia, South Carolina. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, the perpetrators are usually pretty young women looking for wealthy men in clubs to rob. So if you are a wealthy man, dude, <laughs> maybe <laughs> don't. Maybe guard your drink. You know. Okay. Um, all right, everybody, uh, my apologies. I actually have to dip out and head into work. Becca is going to continue the rest of the episode solo. So I'm going to do my best. I will I will place you all delicately in the hands of the person who's the real talent of this podcast. I'm I'm good <laughs> at talking to myself anyway. There you go. You're so... fine. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll try not to go off on too many tangents. Okay. okay. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Now, scopolamine, or hyacine, was first isolated from plant sources in 1880 by German scientist Albert Leidenberg. It is a tropane alkaloid, anticholinergic, and in the anti-muscarinic class of drugs, which basically means it blocks some of the effects of acetylcholine within the nervous system. I know that sounds like a lot, but we'll get to it. Effects of an overdose of this medication would therefore include tachycardia or a uh, rapid heart rate arrhythmias uh, uh, basically abnormal heartbeats blurred vision photophobia some like a sensitive to light your eyes you know no no sun which i basically already have that urinary retention drowsiness hallucinations dry mouth skin reddening, GI immobility, and abnormal breathing, seizures, and sometimes death. Now, physostigmine is the drug of choice to treat an overdose if caught in time, as it is, an, it is a cholinergic drug that can pass the blood-brain barrier to treat the CNS symptoms, the central nervous system symptoms. Other than this, there is stomach flushing and supportive care for those who have overdosed orally if, you know, treated soon enough. So other ways it can be taken are subcutaneously, uh, intravenous via the eyes and with a transdermal patch. As we talked about, it can go right through the skin. At certain doses, scopolamine seems to have negative effects on short term memory. And we don't need any more of that now, do we? Memory acquisition and retention, learning visuospatial centers of the brain, verbal recall, and psychomotor speed. And honestly, jokes on scopolamine because I already have problems with a lot of that. Now, positively speaking, it has been studied as a fast-acting antidepressant recently, and NASA is attempting to make a nasal spray version for quick-acting motion sickness remedies so it really depends on the dose that you're talking about but we're going to talk about a pretty famous case that involves scopolamine slash hyacine and many of you who are into true crime will probably know this case but let's get into it now born in september of 1862 holly harvey crippen would later attend the university of michigan but leave before finishing a medical degree. He traveled to England for a bit where he worked at a psychiatric hospital, then returned to the U.S. to attend the Cleveland Homeopathic Medical College where he did graduate in 1884. He then traveled to New York to specialize in ophthalmology and obtained another degree there in 1887. He married a nurse named Charlotte Bell and they moved to San Diego, California. They had one son, but then halfway through Charlotte's second pregnancy, she became ill and died. So, so Crippen took his son Otto to his grandparents, 
then went off back to New York, where he found a job with Munyon's Homeopathic Home Remedies. He met and married Cora Turner, who was a 19-year-old aspiring actress and singer who used the stage name Belle Elmore. He was 30 years old at this time. She was super enthusiastic, but unfortunately not very talented, even though he helped her afford singing and acting lessons. And he was this quiet, almost shy guy kind of deal. He was eventually sent to open offices for Munyon Homeopathic in England, and he and Cora moved there, where she attempted to have a career as a singer-actress here. Now, it wasn't going all that well, and a lot of Crippen's money had gone toward her ambitions in this area. Crippen lost his job around 1899 and started to work instead as a consult doctor at the Druitt Institute for the Deaf. Here, he met 17-year-old Ethel Inev, who was working as a secretary. His marriage to Cora was becoming strained, likely due to his instability to... Wow, instability. You know, he's probably unstable, unstable at this time, too, because, let's be honest. Likely due to his inability to provide the more lavish lifestyle she wanted and their differences in personality. Whatever the case, he became smitten with this secretary, who was 17 you. And Cora at this time had joined the Music Hall Ladies Guild, for which she became treasurer and was quite popular amongst the other ladies. She hosted suppers at their home, and sometimes they took in lodgers. Rumor has it that she was having an affair um, on with some of these lodgers. Uh, and he was obviously into Ethel and Nev, so they were constantly fighting and, you know, not really treating each other well. And he later took a job with a London dentist where he would administer anesthetic and Ethel also switched jobs to follow him there as their secretary. Now it is suspected that Cora was aware of their affair. Kind of rhymes. On January 19th, 1910, Dr. Crippen obtained around five grains of hyacinth hydrobromide that he had ordered from the pharmacy. Now, if you remember the pharmacies at this time, doctors could just sign things out like that. This was a large amount considering how it was used in very small doses. So on January 31st, 1910, he and his wife had a couple known as the Marinettis over, and his wife apparently knew them from her theater connections. Anyway, they ate, played cards, and just hung out until very late. That was the last time anyone saw Cora alive. By February 3rd, 1910, the Ladies Guild, where she was treasurer, received a letter that said it was from Cora and that she was resigning from her position. The letter also said that she was going back to America to care for a sick relative. Soon after this, Dr. Crippen attended a dance put on by these same women at the music hall, so Cora's friends, and brought Ethel Lenev as his date. Which is just weird behavior. Why would you do that? In March, Ethel moved in with Dr. Crippen and started wearing Cora's clothes and her jewelry. Like, not cool. After being hounded by her friends at the Ladies Guild, who were now very suspicious, Crippen sent a letter to their friends, the Marinettis, reporting that Cora had died while in America. Just convenient for him. He then went on holiday to France with Ethel. The women at the guild started to seek information from America about their friend Cora because, I mean, you would be suspicious too. But when nothing came up, they reported her as missing to the local police. July 8th, 1910, Scotland Yard paid Dr. Crippen a visit. He told the officer that he had lied about Cora dying because he, she actually had run off with another man and he was embarrassed about it, um, even though he's literally doing the exact same thing. But okay. The very next day, Dr. Crippen went on the run with Ethel. They traveled to Antwerp to catch a boat heading to Canada, on which they disguised themselves as father and son. She was literally dressed as a teenage boy. Scotland Yard returned to find they had left and ordered a search be done at the home they had lived in. And on July 13th, 1910, they found the torso of a human body buried in the cellar. The head, arms, and legs were all missing, and they were never recovered. 
and the major bones in the torso had been removed. So this body had basically been filleted. The officers called for the arrest of Dr. Crippen and Ethel Lenev, and they were caught while still on the ship as Captain Kendall on the Montrose had been suspicious of Crippen and his quote-unquote teenage son. Apparently, Ethel was also a bad actress and was not playing her part very well. Anyway, this would be the first arrest made with the assistance of wireless telegram, so that's pretty cool. The chief inspector caught a faster boat than the one they were on after the two had been identified, and the pair was arrested the day before their ship was due to dock. They would be transported back to London to stand trial, as they had been able to positively identify Cora from a scar she'd had on her abdomen, as well as some artifacts belonging to her and Dr. Crippen, including some of her hair and organ fragments. An autopsy had found 0.4 grains of hyacinth in her body and suggested that the torso had been buried there for six to eight months. The cause of death was found to be hyacinth overdose, but there are no real details because Dr. Crippen would not admit to anything. Dr. Crippen pleaded not guilty, but because of the evidence leading back to him, the jury found him guilty. He was hanged on November 23rd, 1910. Ethel, however, was not found to be guilty of anything. She would go on to Canada to be a typist and to live a quiet life. I read where she basically got married and um, had children, and her children didn't even know about any of this until after her death. So, Okay, so it seems like a straightforward case so to speak. But here's where things get a little weird. I read a case report, a forensic science case report um, from the Journal of Forensic Sciences uh, that was published in 2010. Yes, 2010. That actually sought to see if the remains in the cellar were actually Cora Crippens mainly because it was just a torso they found, and they were basically going on a scar. And, I mean, at that time, you know, it's not like they had the whole DNA evidence stuff down. So now Dr. Crippen had proclaimed his innocence the whole time of his trial. But, of course, most do, so they still thought they had enough evidence to convict him, and they did. Now, the study that I recently read in this forensic science journal basically got um, the some DNA from some of her maternal relatives. So she didn't have any children. They didn't have any children together. So they went back and basically spoke with the descendants of um, any brothers or sisters or anyone else from her other other parts of her family and were able to find them and get some samples from them and based on genealogical and molecular data that they were able to test for they came to the conclusion that the remains from the Crippen cellar um, that they were that were found in 1910 were not those of Dr. Crippen's wife so plot twist um, they don't know who who else it could have been. So the question remains, was it or was it not Dr. Kirpin's wife? And if it really wasn't his wife, then what happened to her? Where is she? And also, who is this? So we have some issues there, and we don't really know <laughs> who it was that was found. But we do know they were killed with hyacinth and debromide and then cut up and put in a cellar along with some of Cora's belongings. So either way, that's suspicious. Um, and whoever it was, was murdered. So, or at least died with an overdose of hyacinth hydrobromide. Now... Until we have more information, I'm going to move on from that. Um, but it's an interesting case. And 
Uh, yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts. Was that Korra? They say it's not because, well, I mean, DNA doesn't lie, right? So, who was it? All right, moving on. If I ever get any more updates on this case, I'll let you know. But it is like 2024. This was this journal article was written in 2010. So we'll see. Most people have heard of fentanyl, which is a synthetic derivative of opium, and thus classified as an opioid. In case you don't remember, as we have talked about opioids uh, in one of our episodes, fentanyl is a Schedule II controlled substance and is 100 times more potent than morphine. While useful for pain, it has been misused and abused. Its illegal use often comes from the illegal creation of fentanyl. So a lot of times, yes, you have fentanyl, but it's also in doses that are unpredictable. It's, um, you know, it could be mixed with all kinds of stuff. It's also sometimes put into other illicit drugs without buyers or consumers knowing. And I won't go into great detail about opioids here since we are we have already done an episode on them, but it doesn't take a lot of fentanyl to cause respiratory failure and death. Now, um, I myself have taken fentanyl once. This was when I, during childbirth. The epidural uh, was not working, and I was literally like, I give up. I'm not doing it anymore. You can't, you can't make me. And uh, the doctor was like, give her some fentanyl and bada bing, bada boom. I was able to not give up. Anyway, a recent story that you may have heard involving fentanyl was actually an intentional poisoning. And we're going to discuss that one. Eric Richens uh, was found deceased at the foot of his and his wife's bed in Utah in March of 2022. The wife, Corey Richens, told authorities that she had brought her husband a Moscow mule the night before, and then they found him later unconscious and cold. So he had a drink the night before. Wife came in, I think she said around 3 a.m., just, I mean, live your life, and found him unconscious and cold. An autopsy was done, including a toxicology report, and it showed about five times the lethal dose of illicit non-medical grade fentanyl in his system. Yeah. A year later, his wife, Corey, published a children's book called Are You With Me? About Processing Grief. Now, this is where you may have heard this story because she was arrested not long after publishing this book. Um, and she was on like, you know, news. She, she was on the news talking about this book. Like, yeah, my husband died. My children have been going through it. So I made this book for them. And everybody's like, oh, well, she was she was arrested not long after. because. There was evidence that they had been collecting, including witness accounts of the victim's friends that reported that Eric might have been poisoned just weeks earlier. On Valentine's Day, uh, his wife of nine years, Corey, gave him a sandwich and he was very ill afterwards. He apparently broke out in hives, so he actually used his son's EpiPen and drank a bottle of Benadryl before going to sleep. Not something I recommend. If you're feeling that ill, you need to go to the hospital. Not just, you know, use an EpiPen and drink a bottle of Benadryl. Now, he, because Benadryl itself, you can overdose on, on that as well. He later told a close friend that he thought that his wife had tried to poison him. He had no food allergies, and this was a sandwich that he had had before anyway, from like his favorite sandwich spot. Honestly, like, he really should have taken this to someone right then and there. But here we are. She was said to have purchased fentanyl before both the attempt that Valentine's Day and the actual death of her husband a few weeks later. As such, drug charges were also added to that of murder after her arrest. There are also charges of insurance fraud, mortgage fraud, and forgery. So apparently, Corey forged a life insurance policy 10 days before her husband's death that was to pay out $100,000. She also submitted false bank statements when applying for a mortgage with several companies back in 2021. She was also the beneficiary of multiple policies on Eric's life valued at $1.35 million. She mistakenly had thought that she would receive another 500000 if he died as well. 
Why does that matter? Well, a court... Corey apparently owed around $1.8 million in loans from house flipping projects. So this would have conveniently helped her out of that. Now, the search history found on her phone is also pretty convincing. Okay. And I'm going to read you some of these, uh, some of this search history. Quote, unquote, if someone is poisoned, what does it go down on the death certificate as? Hmm. What is a lethal dose of fentanyl? Can cops force you to do a lie detector test? Death certificate says pending. Will life insurance still pay? Luxury prisons for the rich in America. How to permanently delete information from an iPhone remotely. And... FBI analysis of electronics in an investigation, question mark. Now, she states she's innocent, but has yet to give a plea in her case, and she actually remains in custody for now. She faces all of these charges of murder, forgery, fraud, etc., and is also being sued by her late husband's estate for a lot of different things. This case is still ongoing, obviously, so if I see any updates on it, I will let you know. So. That is where I am going to end things today. And it feels really weird ending things today because I don't have my sidekick uh, or anybody else to help me do that. And I am terrible at stopping conversations. So, yeah. Um, follow us on the Instagram and the, all the things. And uh, next weekend, I do have a plan to talk about a few more medications um, that have been used as poisons. Um, and then we'll, it's not, I don't really want to call it a part two because they're different medications um, and they're different drugs are different. Um, they're different poisons. Okay. Um, because they were literally used as poisons to kill other people. So that's why I'm talking about these specific drugs. Because like I said before, we could talk about all kinds of drugs that have, if misused, can lead to Um, all kinds of symptoms, including death. But the reason why I'm including these in the podcast is because someone has uh, intentionally or um, accidentally used them uh, as a poison. So anyway, thanks for sticking with me. And we will catch you next week. Ciao.